thank you. Thanks everybody for being here. Uh, my name is Daniel. I've been working for almost 10 years with GIS in the Brazilian Federal Police, and I've been to several Phosphor G editions before. And I'm responsible, in my unit, I'm responsible for training, pro procurement, software development, internal sh international cooperation, GIS management. And my area is the geomatics area of the forensics director of, of the Brazilian Federal Police. So I'm a police officer. I'm also a forensics expert. I was recruited about 10 years ago to work in the GIS uh, infrastructure there. So that's what I do there. Uh, I maintain this, uh, I mean, I'm, I manage the team that maintain this portal. And this is a, a knowledge base. Our knowledge base is a week based. And this is our main portal. portal. This is how we provide services to our internal customers. And this is a, 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 big, a big deal there for us that we have a, um, a way to deliver. We, pr we procured the image contracts in the, in, the central, in the central unit and people from all over Brazil will order the images using the, our, our web portal and we will deliver, to the, deliver the image to them using the portal. This is our database our imagery coverage uh, in our internal database. This is all imagery with 30 and 50 centimeters spatial resolution. And th the actual body of this presentation is on GitHub. So I'll close the, the presentation right now and I'll open the GitHub repository. Okay, here. Okay. So in Phosphor G Denver, I'm sorry, Portland, I delivered a presentation called Crazy Data, in which I gave examples on how to deal with the very difficult data. Uh, I mean, either because it's big or because it's dirty or because you have to do some special treatment on it. And when I arrived here at Phosphor G, many people start asking about this subject. So I decided to crunch some data, and this presentation is about how to do it. So I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be very specific that I'm not going to discuss politics, ecology, or relations of cause and effect. I will try to be very objective, very technical here. So please, when you're going to ask questions later, please have that in mind. And the intention is for the whole process to be repeatable. So if you're patient enough and you have access to this repository, we'll be able to do the same things I have done and arrive at the same results. And you will also be able to modify the, the, the searches and the queries, and you will be able to answer different questions than the ones I proposed here. So wh what happened here? Why, 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 why is this presentation, oh sorry, thank you. Why is this presentation being delivered here? We had a lot of news coverage about the the recent news coverage about the fires in the Amazon forest. And we have a lot of data from various serious institutions that give us an insight on that. So this one is very interesting. This is sponsored by NASA. So if you see here the fire counts, the radiative power, it, it's closely related. There are two types of sensors and the, there's maps here. And there's the history, for example, it, this is the state of Brazil. So you have the cumulative monthly fire counts. So it starts at zero in January 1st, and then it will count all the modis alerts, modis and ver verse alerts that w happened during the year in that specific region. So you have a history for several years here. So if you put the, the mouse over here, get the count for 2019, which is 3,200 something fire spots and until this same date in 2016 there was 3532 fire counts so it has all the data in there if you hover the mouse over here you get specific yearly so 2005 was way higher and you have all this very nice data for several states in brazil so that's a that's how i started uh, looking into the subject another very interesting portal is this one, which is the source for the, the fire in, uh, information system from NASA. And it will give you uh, literally a heat map of the, folk, of the, fire, uh, the fire spots that the satellites have detected. And the first thing I realized when I opened this map, 
I, I, was, I was seeing the news and I started checking the data. The first thing I realized is that it, you, you don't have an unusually high, I mean, relatively to the other parts. Just to be clear, this is, uh, sorry, this is a 24-hour alert. So uh, we could give it some more time, but the, it, it, it's difficult to, to see it as uh, to see it, it, it gets too dense, but so it's 24 hours. And when we look at this, we don't see a special concentration on the Amazon area. You see large concentrations here, which is a, a dry area of Brazil, which is not forest. You see high concentrations over here. You do see fires in the forest, lots of fires. And you see this. And I was very surprised when I saw this because this wasn't in the news. So, Let's go to the data then. Uh, to, I, I believe in asking questions that will help us make a decision. So you have a decision in your mind that you want to take. And you, what questions do I need answered to take this decision either way or, or the other? So I, I'm not proposing a decision here, but I'm proposing a question. So the question is, is the Amazon forest being burned at a high rate? And we're going to break this question down. First things first, where is the Amazon forest? There are at least three ways to define the area of the Amazon forest. The first one is a legal uh, laws from Brazil that tell that the Amazon forest is the red line here. It's inside the red line. So that's the legal Amazon, like we call it. So there's special laws for that specific region of the country. And then there is the biome data. So some areas inside the legal Amazon are Pantanal or Caatinga or Lençóis Maranhenses, different areas, no, sorry, not Lençóis, but Caatinga, Pantanal, different biomes. It's not the Amazon forest. It's in the legal Amazon, but it's not the Amazon forest. Okay, what is the biome then? The biome is the green line. But I only have this data for Brazil. If I want to compare Brazil with the other neighboring countries, I wasn't supposed to be using this data. At least I, I had to have similar data to the other, uh, in the other countries, and I don't have it. It's probably available, then, but then again, I wouldn't be able to make it, put it together in two days. So what I decided to use was, was the Amazon River Basin. So if you take the elevation model and you compute where the water would go, if you put the water in each place of, of the, that region of South America, and you track the water all the way down to the sea, which places would you put the water in a way that the water reaches the Amazon River? So that's the area, that's computable, that's very objective, that's an algorithm you can run on the raster data from Mass SRTM, for example. So that's a good starting point. Also, water has a lot to do with, with the, the ecosystem, with the plants, with the animals. And so we, we get a, a, a good enough representation of what, what I am considering the Amazon for these statistics. So it's very objective. We're trying to go for that. OK, so in the GitHub repository, I try to get all the sources there. So if you need the sources, you'll get the, the same data I have. I will show you later ac the actual files with, where I put the links down. So I don't know how long NASA will keep those links for the requests I made, but you can you don't have to wait for NASA to process your new requests. You can just download the ones already made. Or you can make new ones for yourself. So the sources for the main polygon, it's this institution over there. And I the, the source for the green line is here. So it's a WFS service, open data, Brazilian open data. Okay, now that we got figure out where the Amazon forest is. How do we measure burn rates? Because that's our question. We're asking if the burn rates are unusually high. So NASA has this fire information resource management system. So they provide heat spots from the two sensors that are aboard several satellites. MODIS sensors have been around since 2001. And there are two satellites with those sensors. And the VIRS sensors are more modern. They give different products. And you can do the, your, your statistics with either one. They have a high correlation between each other, but they're not the same. If you look at the, this portal here, and they really zoom in the data. I'm feeling very adventurous here. Maybe I hope it doesn't crash. OK, so the, the orange ones are MODIS data. 
The red ones are VERS since it's very recent data. The MODIS version is in a near real-time mode, it's not science mode. So they still have to calibrate for location. But you see that they have high correlation, but they're not the same. For example, here you don't have MODIS alerts, but you do have VERS. Okay? But the number of features is much higher. Okay, let's go back there. So that's what the data looks like. I'm, I'm going to show you step by step how I loaded it, if I have enough time, but I'll show you step by step how I loaded it. So that's how it looks in Brazil. That's just for the last month, last 30 days, sorry, uh, 30 days from September 27 to August 27. And that's what it looks like. And it's only MODIS, not VERSE. And QGIS has a hard time with this. Lots and lots of points. The total data sets has 100 million, 110 million points. So this is Brazil. Remember when we spoke about Africa? I went over there and that's the same scale, same configuration. And this is Brazil, this is Africa in the last 30 days. And this isn't in the news. Okay, but this is just seeing. We don't, have the data, we don't have the numbers. We haven't crushed, crushed the numbers yet. So this is the source. This is where it got this from. Also, there are some caveats, because we have to be careful with what we are measuring. What does a fire detection mean on the ground? What does each feature from this data set mean? So if, if you open here, you have access to detailed information from NASA, from the science team, about what is this. So if you have a fire, so if you have a fire, in a, uh, a fire in a location, the satellite will detect just one fire spot here. If you have two fires on the same location, it will detect just one fire spot, albeit it will be brighter. I didn't take brightness into my, my calculations. I could have, but you will see later why I didn't, because it was very heavy for my notebook over there. And if you have a large fire that takes four uh, pixels, th those pixels are, I think, one kilometer by one kilometer. So if you have a large fire, you get f four, and it's this case, four detections. And VERS is pretty much, pretty much the same, with the difference that the pixel is 375 meters. It's much smaller. It's like, like almost, I don't know, almost f four times more pixels. Yeah, almost four times more, pi more pixels per unit of area. So let's get back there. OK, now we got, we're still, um, studying the question, what does it mean for the array to be high or low rate? I can't answer that. I really can't. I got, didn't get to a conclusion. But we could start by comparing, right? We could comparing, compare one place to the other and try to get similar data. And I got uh, natural earth data for the countries. And I got uh, data from our geographics institute for our municipalities, which is not here, sorry, I should have put it here, and for our, our states. So what time frame are we talking about? Uh, I didn't put a lengthy explanation here, but all the data we see from the, the, the Earth, the firm's uh, website talks about a yearly cycle. So everybody measures yearly, I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to adhere to the time here, which was almost finished. So what do we do to process this information? There's a lot of notes here, what, what have I done? But I think it's best that I go to the results, then I jump to the, to the repository where there is a sequence of steps that you could follow later. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that if I take Amazon fires by country, so I p picked up the Amazon polygon, I cut down the, 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 the polygons of the, the, the countries, and I considered only the area of the country inside the Amazon. If we see here, it looks like the, 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 the heat spots are diminishing, right? From 2018. Especially in the, verse, in, the, in the density data here. So this is actual fires, the absolute number. This is divided by the area. So it's MOGIS fire per 1,000 kilometers square. But 2019 hasn't finished yet. If you do the same thing, but we take into account that only the data until August 27, you see this. So it's much different, right? The first thing, first thing we see here is that Brazil has the most fires, by far, in the Amazon. But that the highest density of fires is not us, it's Bolivia and Guiana. I was really impressed by this. So it's also very different. This is zero. 
So it's I like almost 50% difference. So this is the verse data, which is very similar, pretty much the same. You could look at carefully there the later. So and if if we need to take a decision, if you're your decision maker in Brazil and you need to know wh where the, the 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 problem is worse you will take a look at a graph like this. So it will separate by state. So there are worse states, like here, Roraima has the highest, highest density, and Mato Grosso has the highest count. But do you see the time series? This isn't, this isn't unusually large. It's much larger in 2018, but it isn't unusually large compared to the time series. Amazon's fires have always been in the news, but not this much. So my impression is that this is, to answer the question, it, if it's a high rate or not, I don't know. But it's similar to the rate that we've been seeing so far. And it has been much wor worse in the past. That is very, very bad. 2004, 2005 was very, very bad. Then you have density here. That's what a decision maker would look at. Thank you. For municipalities here, oh, sorry, that's the, no, that's the same data, but it's VERS now. And it, since VERS is, uh, is more recent, the sensor is more recent, you, you, you'll have data here since 2001, and you have data here since 2012, and so you have to make a, you either plot this data again for you to take a look at it carefully, or you have to do a mental, mental exercise to translate one thing to the other. And here in the density, we see clearly that the density has increased, and in some cases, more than 100% here, which is the case of the state of Horaima. Oh, then we get the same data by municipality. So that's what decision makers should look at into how to fight the problem. But then I try to compare with the cunt other countries. So this is the same problem as before. The, the, day, the year hasn't finished yet. But the thing is, I don't know how the, the, the yearly cycle works in the other countries. So I just compared the height of the lines. I didn't compare whether it's decreasing or increasing from 2018. But we see this by country. That's the total amount of fires, absolute fires. The Democratic Republic of Congo is here, then Russia, then Angola, then Brazil down here, then Zambia and the all, the all these, others, these other countries. If you go by density, you won't see any of these countries in density. If you just put the most dense deforestation here, because of course small countries, they uh, burn everything and be really high. So I pick these countries and I plot this graph, the density graph. So the highest density of deforestation is Angola, then Zambia, then the, not sorry, not deforestation. We are measuring heat spots. So it's Angola, Zambia, Congo, Central African Republic, Mexico, Russia, then Brazil. So you could reproduce this data if you wanted to. But this data is also, I like to say that it's also very dangerous. Why? What conclusions are you taking from this? You're not measuring intentional fires. You're not measuring wild, if the fire is a wildfire, is an intentional fire. You're not measuring, vo uh, you're not separating volcanic activity from burning forests. You're not uh, taking into, into account several other, other, uh, feet, uh, other informations. But it's something to look at and try to get more information to see what does that data mean. So, why don't we have the, we only have Moody's fires here? We have, don't have any verse here because my machine crashed. It took three hours to run this query and then it crashed. This query took 59 minutes. So I'm just going to tell what, where the rest of the data is and I'll, 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 I'll wrap up. So if you go here on the repository, you have the scripts by order. So first you download firm's data. Uh, there, this is the fire links. So these are really lazy scripts to unzip, to load the files into the database, then to process, process the data, and then export the, the, the materialized tables, and then generate the graphics. This is a, a very hacky script, but it produces very nice graphics. You have a, a one function to make, plot the graphics, and then several configurations to plot each, each graphic here, so you can change, for example. I, I use 10, 10 uh, countries here. You could change the number and get more countries into the graph. OK, um, I'm, I'm done. I could explain it in detail, but it would take a long time. And if you, if you need anything specific to the repository, you could either put a poll 
requires to open an issue with the repository. Thank you. We have five minutes for questions, uh, start in, starting in a second. Just take your breath. Okay. Go ahead. So, yeah, one, one second. We need a microphone for, yeah. for that. So it can be streamed as well. Thank you for, for the talk. Very enlightening. But uh, for me, I'm a biologist, so inevitably it will have an ecological taste, my, my question. When you're comparing Africa to, to the Amazon, large the Amazon forest, you're comparing apples with oranges, okay? Afri Central Africa contains a lot of grassland, savannas. Fires there is an inevitable part. It's, it's part of the biome, biome uh, resistant, okay? Amazon forest is not. So uh, just, just to address this, uh, this thing, because you ask why, why the other fires are not in the news. And fires there existed for thousands of years. Amazon, Amazon fires is part of the deforestation. Okay, this is just a, just a statement that I want to make. The rates may not be higher, I agree. So another part of, of my, my statement rather than a question is that the proper question to ask how much, th how much this adds to the total loss of the forest and not if the rates are higher or lower compared to other years. Okay, this, that's two comments. Yeah, you don't have to, to yeah, I, I, it, I, I don't know yeah. how to answer that. Yeah, yeah. I don't have Sorry, just, just yeah, for the, a computer engineer. Just so. for the audience yeah. because we, sometimes we give her the wrong impression about, about stuff. Sure, thanks for the comments. Yeah. Next question, please. Okay. Um. I just want to ask you, basically, are you, you are using any kind of uh, prediction systems for forest fires or thinking about that? You know, because then you can easily look to the locations where something can happen in the future, like let's say tomorrow or in two days, based on the just weather data, let's say. Uh, at, well, I'm, there are better people than me to answer for that, but the best best I can answer is that the fires have always have a context. It's either environmental or people have uh, been cutting down the trees and they want to use it for grassland or something like that. So if you get that context before, you could in theoretically predict where the fires will be. Yeah, but uh, the fire starts when? When the, the, the matter on the forest ground is dry. If there are wet stuff, like wet leaves and whatever, there is no fire because the stuff must be dry. So based on the weather condition, it's kind of easier to predict. The well, every year is the same. Every year there's a dry season, then when the fires happen, and you know, it's a large area, so you could, you, you would, probably be better predicting with a specific context of that specific area because everywhere it's it's drier, not that dry because it's the rainforest, it rains a lot there. So. Hey, um, I was just wondering, do you have any um, detail on um, the breakdown of what happens naturally versus ones that are done uh, by people when they are trying to say clear land? Is there is there information on that? Just well, I didn't do that analysis, but you could theoretically do it because their their fire temperatures, their the amount, the size of the fire, there's um, the history of the fire in the area. So if you see a new fire where there's already been a fire that's different than the fire where you have never seen anything before, so you could do this with this data. I didn't process it, but you're welcome. Hi, thank you for the presentation. I was wondering, did you look at Sentinel-2 data from the Copernicus mission from Europe? Because you should have higher resolution. I'm not sure if you could see better details. That would be great for validation, so that we make a hypothesis, or so say a more complex analysis here. So my hypothesis is this, this is, for example, deforestation. So I'll check it with Sentinel data, and but but I, I didn't do that analysis mm. here. But the, the the thing is, Sentinel doesn't have a product like the the firms. If the Sentinel, if the is is a, at least I, that that I know of, if they produced a fire alert based on optical mm -hmm. Sentinel two data, that would be that could be have been used for this study. Yeah, I think it should be possible because it's also a multispectral sensor, so you should have access to some information. Mm -hmm. And just curiosity, did you look also in Siberia? Because I know there were some fires uh, there also in this time. You know, something I was curious about Siberia. I was wondering if 
if somebody lights a fireplace in their home, if it will show up as a fire. <laughs> so that, that's unfair, right? So you're heating your own home and it shows up as a fire spot, but it isn't. So I just checked this. It has to be a fire at least 50 meters square to show up in the settlement. Okay. Uh, no, just comments. Um, there's also um, a burnt area product from Modis that you could use to validate somehow because this active fire products is based on a threshold on temperature on LST and you can be detecting a lot of things as well. I mean, okay, Amazon is maybe burning I and so on. But maybe I have linked this here. Let me check. And that modest product is, okay, 500 meters, so you could also use it. Okay, where can I get the Modis burn area product? In this the Modis NASA Earth data site. Okay. So it's already... What I have seen so far is that it's updated May 2013, so it doesn't okay, work no, here. It, it's still going. Oh, it's... Okay. Yeah, Thank you, Daniel, for the presentation. Let's give him a applause.